I wanted to come up here barefoot after the first talk. <laughs> this is a copy of my prenuptial agreement. Here's what it says. I get to die first. <laughs> my husband and I both signed it, each asserting our clear desire to not want to live without the other. This, this is a copy of Britney Spears and Kevin Federline's prenup. Okay, it's not really a copy of their prenup, but this is how big it is, 60 pages. My husband and I, we created ours with the certainty that we were going to be together forever. Brittany and Kevin, well, they had something else in mind. 60 pages is what you get when you're negotiating the end of a relationship. Somewhere in there, I like to imagine it says, salt shaker to Brittany, pepper shaker to Kevin. I'm an angel investor. I've been doing it about 15 years, but only very recently in the space we call social enterprise. I've been hanging around with these entrepreneurs it's humbling, let me tell you. Some of these kids at 22, and among the millennials, there really is no shortage of rock stars. They've accomplished more than my most accomplished friends have at 42. It's, uh, it's really, it's just, it's amazing. So anyway, uh, we're not going to catch them anytime soon. I, for one, am not going to abandon my husband and kids to go create sustainable villages in the Congo like Alexander Petrov is doing. But I can help out. I can write Alex a check. Here's the thing about philanthropy, though. For me, it's not very satisfying. I've actually had the experience of writing a check, and before the ink is even dry, being asked, can we count on you again next year? It's instantly apparent how unsustainable it is, how unbalanced it is. It really doesn't work for me. The great thing about the rise of for-profit social enterprise is that I can invest rather than donate. Investing is really a better message anyway. It's a vote of confidence. I'm investing in you. I'm making a bet. Really, it's a better signal. But the thing is, I'm not really sure how I feel about profiting off the 26-year-old creating 10-acre farms in the Congo. So what do you do when you meet an amazing entrepreneur with a world-changing idea? Here's what I do. I create long-term relationships with them. Here's how I do it. Like a traditional investment, I give them money and I get equity in their company. If the equity is ever realized, they get their share of the profits and I get mine. But here's the twist. My piece? I give it back to them and I say, now it's your turn. I want you to go find the next amazing group of entrepreneurs and together as partners, we're going to invest this money forward in them. Essentially, I'm breeding angel investors, also creating a genuine economic growth engine. But most importantly, I'm building long-term relationships. Relationships that go beyond capital. Relationships that, in reality, actually have very little to do with money. So getting back to those prenups for a minute, investing is a little bit like getting married. I have money, you have a widget. Together, we believe we're going to be more than the sum of our parts. And the term sheet, that's the prenup. Think about that for a second. The term sheet is a document that defines how you're going to break up at the peak of your success, no less. How nutty is that? Who meets somebody amazing and thinks, I'd like to plan for the end of this relationship? <laughs> well, that's what Brittany and Kev did. That's how you end up with a 60-page document. My term sheet is a little different. My term sheet doesn't define how our relationship is going to end. My term sheet defines how our relationship is going to begin. Because if I'm investing in you, Really, I'm not that interested in your widget. I have no way of knowing if it's going to fail or succeed. I don't really believe anybody does. But I do know something about you. I know that you're successful. I don't mean I know that you're going to be successful. I mean I know that right here, right now, in this moment, you are a success. I understand that by normal measures of society, the respective zeros in our bank accounts might suggest that I'm successful and you're not. Or Maybe that I'm more successful than you are, but really, if you're out there creating self-sustaining communities in the Eastern Congo, by any measure, you are a success. So getting back to that imbalance of power for a minute that exists between donors and recipients, I don't like it. I don't like it in my investments either. The people I invest in, I see them as peers, really. I mean, maybe not financially, in most cases not demographically either, but in all the cases, all the measures that really matter to me, I want to be playing on Team Alex. I want Alex playing on Team Kim. 
And that's the message I send when I write a check. Your widget, it's a fine widget, but to me it's just a means to an end. In the way that ice cream is really just a transport mechanism for sprinkles, your widget is just the mechanism by which we get to become partners. I've been doing this a few months. It's life changing for me and the entrepreneurs I've invested in. So much so that I'm doing this in my for profit deals. I did a traditional investment recently. Me, an angel, an entrepreneur. We cut up the equity, and at the end, I said, I'm throwing two points back on the table. Who's in with me? Surprisingly, they both came in on the deal, and now we have a relationship that goes beyond the deal. We have a shared future. And when you operate from that point of view, it changes the way you feel about yourselves, about your partners. I genuinely believe it increases everybody's chances for success. My name is Kim Scheinberg. My fund is Presumed Abundance. This is my term sheet. I haven't gotten it down to one page just yet, but I'm working on it. Thank you.